Welcome back all, this is Daz from Motoro Techniques. So up this week, uh, there's a little bit of a, an extension video on one I did on the DR5000 by Digikais. On that particular video, I looked at using a buck converter and changing the, the voltage up and down to effectively change the track output voltage. Um, I got a few really good comments from some of my viewers out there about issues that can cause for the DCC wave and the like. So what I ended up doing is buying myself a little cheap oscilloscope um, model I will put in the description below. And also I reached out to uh, Dr. Jeff Bunzer who gave me the, the model that uh, he has a bit of a play around with. So so we'll look at what that does to the the waveform of the DCC signal, which, which is quite interesting. So this video will have a DCC deep dive into the signal, so to speak. So if that's not for you, just buzz through to the end of the video. There's all chapters on this to, to buzz around to depending on what bit you want to have a look at. So I want to get, have a big shout out to my sponsor of this channel, uh, PCB Way, and their eighth anniversary promotion. So head over to their website, pcbway.com, and see what sort of awesome coupons and deals you can get with them right now for the next uh, month or so. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCBWay or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs ranging from standard to advanced PCBs with one to 30 layers with full featured printed circuit boards. PCBWay don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. Watch out for my upcoming videos where I'll be using some of their products. So what we're going to first look at here is the DCC waveform. So I think it's probably prudent we touch a little bit on uh, some of the science behind it. I'm no means uh, an expert here. So this is obviously information that I've gleaned from various websites that I will link below, mainly DCC Wiki and the NMRA DCC command control standards. So we'll start with the myths that surrounding the DCC signal. So most of the myths result as a, my understanding is applying an analog logic to the digital concept. This is controversial, I would think. Others have been promoted over the years due to a misunderstanding or a dislike of DCC technology. Another source of confusion can be probably based around people using the incorrect terminology. And I probably fall into that category on occasions as well. So some of the myths we might be looking at is DCC is some form of AC or DCC is actually an AC signal. And also the the big one, I think, where people sort of come undone and I probably do until you sort of dig deep to sort of understand what this is all about is DCC has polarity. And we will talk about that briefly um, upcoming in this video. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the DCC side of things. So the booster creates what they're calling a binary on or high or off, which is a low signal, which is applied to the power bus, which then in turn goes via the power bus to your track and then to the train, then obviously runs the train via the DCC decoder. The binary value, so the binary value is on, as just shown in this little diagram here, the, the ones and the zeros, is determined by the period from one high state to the next. There's full power on the rails at all times. So if you've got 16 volts to, to your rails, that's what you get. While the booster output is turned on, voltage does not determine the locomotive speed like in the, the DC and the AC world. Obviously, that's where some of the confusion may lay. The signal with the DCC has a phase. So as we talked about before, we don't have a positive and negative. So we have phases which are present on a rail. So one rail is energized high and on while the other rail is low and off. One rail will always be the opposite and inverted state. So what we mean by that is is when we come across to issues with reverse loops and how the reverse loop module will work. It's not actually changing the polarity of the signal because it doesn't have a polarity. It's just changing the phase to high and low and, and so forth. So that's probably another term we need to start probably using is phase and not polarity. 
So with this, the the convention with the NMRA is the rails identified A and B, whose phases can be handled by the auto reverses, as as we just talked about. Um, and that's an issue when an A rail meets a B rail. We need the the auto reverser to toggle and flip the phase, not the polarity, but the phase. What on the oscilloscope, or what uh, limited information I can get from my oscilloscope anyway, what actually can happen if we don't have robust wiring or we play with um, other type of interferences, what DCC can pick up and what that will do. So if we're talking about locomotives, functions and the like, and it's all been driven by these these signals to, to go and stop and turn the bell and the lights off and everything else, if the DC signal is not sound, we're going to have some real problems with um, runaway locomotives and um locomotives not responding to our, our commands that we've been giving them. So let's look at the rig that we're going to be using here. So that's the Digikai's DR5000 Digi Central. So we've got the obviously the power coming in. So at this point in time, we're not using any buck converter. This is pure sine wave or pure wave form coming up the DCC. So let's just turn it off there. So we've got the, the track power directly out of the back of the DR5000 there that goes to the oscilloscope. What we'll do here, I'll take some photos of the various steps of the, the different waveforms that I'm finding and just so we can have a look at them a little bit closer on what to look out for uh, whilst using the oscilloscope. So what we've got here is my multimeter, which is showing 18.6 volt, which is probably a little bit higher. So that's representing the, the track output that's coming out of the back end of the DR5000 at the top of the screen there. So my power supply for my DR5000 is the 18 volt version. To the right of that is my very basic little oscilloscope there. So that's just showing um, a few waveforms of, of the signal coming through. So now we'll deep dive a little bit further into the, the shape and the form of that uh, particular waveform. All right, so in this photo, what we're looking at here is approximately, I think, 10 cycles. Um, more likely, looks like they're preamble of the DCC signal. So that means no, no locomotives are controlled and there's very few command packets coming through. So the system's just sitting idly. So for DCC, what we need to look at is the VPP or volts peak to peak. So the total voltage swing from the bottom to the top on this occasion is 35.1 which is a roundabout right for considering I'm putting into to this oscilloscope about 17 volts. So how that is worked out, you've got the V max, which is 17.1 and V minimum, which is 18. So that gives you your 35.1 uh, 35 volts. So the important thing here is that we're centered around zero volts. So you'll see on the left-hand side here, a little blue arrow and the right-hand side, uh, a yellowy green arrow. That uh, is the zero line, so you need to center your, your your waveform around the middle of that. So we've got equal amount of waveform above and below that line. So now notice the VR, VRMS, which is at 17 volts, which is slightly higher than the VPP divided by 2. So the VPP divided by 2 obviously would, would be 34, so we're 1.1 volts above that. So what that means is the waveform has obviously some rounded corners as as I've picked it, pictured there with the, the arrows and may even occasionally had some overshoot and undershoot and below the signal tops and bottoms which changes the the root mean squared signal value. So what I mean by that is so a perfect signal should have sh straight up and straight down, straight tops and very square corners. So basically what this is going to do, this is going to yield an RMS value of half the VPP. So we should be at 34 VPP. So we'll also note that the cycle time here, which is what we'll talk about, uh, which is in with the NMRA DCC standards, currently at 0.116 milliseconds. So that's uh, 116 microseconds. So in analysing this, this waveform from the DCC on my oscilloscope here. So it's going to assume a few things here regarding the main assumption is that the command station is sending out a perfect square waveform um, in the first instance. But however, sort of beyond what the picture we're looking at here is, so where what the reason why I bought 
the more portable version at this point is. So I can place this instrument around various parts of my layout and just see what um, how my my waveform is looking. So what I'll look at doing is probably put it at the at the end of the very longest run of my DCC bus, and then run a few locomotives with power hungry. Um, DCC decoders and see what distortion that does to the uh, does to the waveform. I will expect to, to see a little bit of ringing there. So apparently that's uh, one of the of the issues there. Well, that's where the rise and the fall, the overshoot of the DCC form that we 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 spoke about before. Obviously, this changes the VPP and the VMRS. And with enough, you'll get. Um, this is where we start having errors, uh, packet errors, and packets not being um, recognised because obviously the the uh, the information is reading from those square corners. So if you've got jagged edges, um, various jagged edges before the end of the actual waveform, is when you're going to have issues. That's when you get the runaway locomotives. Um, you'll get functions that are not working and the like. Also, I, I, um, as I mentioned before, I reached out to. Jeff Bunzer, uh, and I thank you very much for his help for helping me just um, break down uh, the data on this oscilloscope. He also mentioned that you can obviously get a um, degradation in keeper lies and ultimately capacitor failure uh, regarding this type of thing. So I think that's quite interesting um, in itself. So what we're going to do now, we'll just go and hook up my buck converter and we'll just change the the, volt, the input voltage from the the 18 volt transformer that came with the DR5000 and we'll just see what that does to the waveform. So here's the, the rig that I was talking about before uh, with the buck converter. So basically what we do, the buck converter plugs into the input of the DR5000 for the DC signal and then obviously that uh, adjusts the, the track output. So then obviously you can see it dancing through there on the oscilloscope. So what we'll have a do, we'll pause one of the uh, one of the waveforms and we'll have a little bit of a deep dive and have a look at the, the formation of the DCC signal. So this is uh, a direct photo of off the oscilloscope for the beam bolt input. So I'm not going to go through all the VMAX and the VMINs and VPPs. Again, I'll let you look at that in your own time. But there is one a few interesting stats on this screen. So the cycle time is now blown out quite significantly to nearly double. Um, it's still exactly the same. So there's no locomotive. There's no function. As I said, I won't go through any of the VMAX, the VMINs and the VPPs. I'll let you study that in your own time to uh, compare that to the last part of the video. So... Um, you'll see the cycle time is 0 0.08 milliseconds. So I did go back in and have a look at that from the initial one, and it does dance between 116 and over 200. So that's not too much of an issue at this point in time. So just quickly on the VMAX and VMIN, I know I didn't say I was going to touch on that, but they're both 17.4, which I think is quite interesting. So that's pretty well where it's meant to be. So that's going to give you VPP of 34.8, which is smack bang um, halfway between high and low or uh, above the line. So that's exactly where we need to be. So what we'll have a quick look at is the actual high and low. So this is where I think the buck processor, buck converter does fall down. Um, we've got quite a, a bit of ringing there, which is, I think, going to cause a bit of issues. And by what Dr. Jeff Bunzel was sort of suggesting to me is probably not desirable. Um, particularly, this is just straight out the back of the DCC command station as well. So that's the end of the video. So I was looking at doing some more voltages um, from the DC coming into the DR5000. I am seeing a similar type of results with the ringing, so I think that's going to cause a bit of an issue. I would like to sort of test it out in the layout, just sort of what results we get there. So that might be a subsequent video. So uh, make sure you comment below and what experiments you've done regarding an oscilloscope or ways I could probably do it better. I realize this is just a, a little cheap a portable oscilloscope but it sort of gives you a bit of an idea of how easily you can affect a dcc signal so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time